So recently I caught up with Saijun and I saw they have the Crane 3 Lab out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the Creator Bundle. We're going to crack it open, we're going to have a look and see everything that's in there. I'm going to show you how to set it up and then we're going to take it out in the field and we're going to test it. So this is going to be a comprehensive review of the Crane 3 Lab. a reimagined handle design with an OLED screen, sling mode, 10 pound payload, seven and a half hour battery life, and a wireless operation, including object tracking. Could this be the new king of camera stabilizers? Okay, for someone like me that loves tech, this is really super exciting. So it looks like we've got the Crane 3 Lab here, and then we've got some other accessories that we're gonna look at. All right, so let's crack it open and have a look. So this feels like similar material to what they have on the Ronin. There's a couple of catches on here and just slide it open. Wow, that's nice. Let's look at some of the accessories that we have here. Here we are, I put everything inside the box to kind of show you how it's got room for the accessories. And let's go through everything really quickly here. Here's the two servo motors. We've got the Max and we've got the Light. So this enables us to do mechanical zoom and follow focus. We'll set this up in a little bit and show you exactly how to set it up. We've got a holder here for the phone so you can connect the phone wirelessly. You can hold it in your hand or you can attach it onto the crane. Here's the three axis gimbal itself. Battery charger, we've got the batteries here. Now the batteries are more powerful than the ones in the crane two. However, if you were working on the crane two and you have the batteries, they will work in here. It'll give you a little bit less battery time, but still excellent to have that second set of batteries. Then of course we've got the uh, mount here, the tripod mount. We've got our accessories. So everything fits inside the box nice and neatly, enables us to get on location. Now there's one slot here for the base, which I've already mounted here to my Sony a7 III. All right, let's have a look at the setup. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our base out of the box and we're just gonna set it up. Gives us a firm foundation to work off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull our gimbal out. All right, so now we're going to pull out our gimbal. One of the things you'll notice about the gimbal is everything is locked in place and that's because it has these nice locking mechanisms. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach it to the base quickly. So we'll just put the base in there. Screw it on. Now what I'm going to do right now is the basic setup and balance. Now we're going to take our camera and we want to mount our camera. We're just gonna pull our camera back and I'm just gonna lock it in position for now. All right, so the next step we wanna do is we want to actually set this up and balance it. But before we do, we need to put our batteries in. So let's just pop this open here. Put the case in place, lock it in. So this is the way we're gonna be using it like this. So I've just locked these in position to help us with balancing. Okay, so there's three motors on here, if we look at this. The first motor here, this is our tilt, this goes up and down. Our second motor here, this is our roll, that goes from side to side. And then our pan motor is the one at the bottom. So we wanna make sure that each of these three motors are properly balanced. So make sure you take your lens cap off before you balance it, but also I would suggest connecting the cables. So I'm going to do that right now. So I have two cables I want to connect to this camera. One is the video, and that way I can use it on my phone, mobile. 
So we're gonna to connect to the camera control system. That's the HDMI for video. Now you could connect this to a monitor or you could connect it wirelessly to a phone, which is what we're gonna do. Then we wanna be able to control the camera itself. So we're gonna connect in here to the camera controller and then we're gonna go into the USB here on the Sony. Now I really recommend attaching all your accessories before you balance it because these can actually change the weight of the camera. So when we go and put the follow focus system on, we will need to rebalance. So what we wanna do first of all, is we're just gonna unlock it here and we're just gonna get this backwards and forwards movement. So I'm just gonna loosen off the side here and then we, all we need to do is slide the camera backwards and forwards. Next one I wanna do is I wanna bring the camera up here and we need to balance this. And then when you can just kind of put it in any position like that without it tipping backwards or forwards, we know that it's properly balanced. So let's lock off that axis. Okay, that's our tilt motor. Let's do our roll motor. Gonna loosen it off. And... Okay, let's do our pan motor. Okay, so for this one, you're gonna tilt it all the way forward, and then what we're looking for is a balance there. So let's loosen that off. That looks pretty close there. Okay, and let's unlock everything. And to test it, we should be able to move the camera into any position we want, and it should stay there. That's great, now we have a perfectly balanced gimbal. Okay, now we're gonna turn it on, but before you turn it on, make sure the motors are unlocked, because if they're locked, you can damage the brushes in them. So let's turn it on, we're just gonna hit the little button on the side, hold it down for about three seconds, and the gimbal should now be on. Okay, so now as I do this, notice how nice and smoothly the camera moves. So one of the nice things about this gimbal is that we can go from above just simply drop it and then it goes into underslung mode. So one of the things that's interesting about this with the way that this handle is shaped, it actually makes it very, very easy to use this in underslung mode to kind of walk along like that. And then when you're going this way, you can hold this close to your body. It gives you a little bit more stabilization. Um, you can hold it with one hand if you like. You can hold it with one hand here. Although I like the idea of being able to hold this with two hands, it does enable us to do more with this gimbal. All right, so we have the camera control unit on the bottom, which is what the camera is attached to. And this enables us to change settings on the camera. So we can change the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture by this handle. Now this handle here has been inspired by a flight control stick, you know, on a jet plane. So all the controls we could possibly want are here. So we can change the gimbal settings by touching this little button. We can change the gimbal sensitivity. We can tune it, do different things like that. We can get to the camera settings here, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And just by turning the little wheel here, we can change these settings. Now we've got a little uh, rocker switch here that we can use for zoom. So this actually works a little bit on the Sony here because this has the electronic zoom. I can zoom in and out with this lens, um, but also this will work when we attach our follow focus system. So this is actually where this really comes into its own. So there's different shooting modes and these three buttons here enable us to get into these different modes. There's PF, which is pan follow, which means as I turn, the camera will pan automatically. So I'm turning the gimbal, see how the camera is going like that. But when I go up and down, it'll keep the camera nice and level and it won't go up and down, it's locked there. Now, if I wanna go up and down, I can do that with the joystick. So this enables me to just kind of set my horizon and then just run along and do all my panning shots like that without having to worry about the camera tilting up or down and ruining my horizon. So this will keep it nice and steady. Then if I change this to follow mode, which is just F mode, that means if I go up or down, the camera will also tilt. And if we go side to side, the camera will follow. So this enables us to just move the gimbal and have the camera smoothly following 
all the movements. And I just click here once again and it goes back into pan follow. Then there's other modes we have. We can go into point of view mode and point of view mode allows it to roll as well. This is kind of like a first person view, you know, like on an airplane. Then if I tilt it up, I can go into this mode here, which is vortex mode. And in vortex mode, I can use the joystick and I can roll the camera. So this gives us that kind of spinning effect there. And then we can recenter it like that by just hitting that button. All right, so there's another control on the front here. This front enables us to go from our gimbal mode to our lock mode. So in lock mode, the camera will stay pointed no matter which way we turn the gimbal. See that? The camera's always gonna stay forward. So this is good, you know, when we're doing like movement like that and we wanna have tilting or movement on the camera, we can do that with the joystick here. So we can move this joystick, we can pan, we can tilt, we can do it all with the joystick right there. If we wanna recenter the camera, we just hit this bottom button. So if we're running like this and we wanna lock it, simply click down on that rocket switch and we're in lock mode, click up again, and now we're in follow mode again. On the camera control system, there's some additional settings on here. Uh, there's an eight volt power out, so you could power your camera from it. Works on the 5D Mark IV, no problem. Um, we've got two attachments on the front here, which we're gonna use a little bit when we attach our wheels. But also on the front here, we've got a handy little thing that pops open and we've got a USB out so we can actually power our mobile phone. We can take out this little attachment here if we want. And I'm just gonna pop it on the side. So now we can take our mobile phone, we can pop it out, snap it in there. And we can actually attach to so the camera control unit here will wirelessly connect to the phone so we can see the settings of the camera on the phone. And we can also control the settings. So we can change camera settings. We can pan and roll the camera. We can move it around. We can change focus. We can do all of these things in the mobile phone. So you can either have it attached and use it like this as an additional monitor. So you can work as a two person team. The first person can walk and carry the camera, move it around, while the second person can be using the remote device and can actually aim and move the camera and frame the shots, etc., remotely. So another thing on here, you know, we have the button on there. If we want to start recording, we can do it right there and it will begin recording or we can stop, which is nice. This actually works on the Sony a7 III even the remote monitor, I can see what the camera's seeing through the phone. And the other thing, we've even got a shutter button, so I can press it down halfway to focus, press it again to take the picture. So there's a nice feature on here, and that is auto tracking. So why don't we just turn this around, point this towards me, and I'm just gonna pull up the app on here, and then I'm just gonna hit this little button here, the tracking app and it just turns yellow, and then I'm just gonna draw a square over my face. Now the camera's gonna follow me. Look, mom, no hands. <laughs> so right now the camera's following me. This is really cool, this is amazing. So I'm gonna go down a little bit. Then we go up a bit, moving over. And so now it's automatically tracking me. Of course, you can also lock onto an object and then when you move the crane around, it's gonna keep that centered. And some of the other things that have happened during here too is the motors are much quieter. In fact, most of the time I can't even hear them at all and also a lot more powerful. So it's got a very heavy payload. So we can also adjust the sensitivity of the motors uh, on here. So we're using a heavier camera. You might wanna use the heavy mode. Uh, whereas I'm using the light mode right now for the a7 III. So if I had a heavier lens on there, I'd probably use medium weight all right, we're about to head out in the field and put this through its paces. But before we do, I'm gonna just do a quick segment here on setting up the servos. Okay, and there we go. Now we've rebalanced it. And let's turn everything on, turn on the gimbal, making sure, of course, everything is unlocked. Turn on the camera. And now if I use this trigger here on the joystick, I can zoom in or out. And if I turn the wheel here on the follow focus, 
Notice I'm also able to adjust that. And now from the mobile device, we can control the camera movement, we can control the zoom and focus, and then we can also change the camera settings such as ISO shutter speed and aperture. We can also choose the gimbal modes from here. So this actually gives us a lot of control from uh, there. Personally, I prefer to use it this way and use the focus wheel and also the rocker switch here for the zooming and just kind of use the gimbal. The mobile app works quite well, but I find that sometimes with the movements, it's a little bit quick. So I see the sensitivity settings and things like that in there. Maybe if I spend a little more time playing around with those, I can get those a little bit more tuned in. So, all right, so this is everything set up. Why don't we head out and use this on the field right now? We're in a super fast car that is doing not even 20 miles per hour. George is really frustrated. This is my friend George's car. He's over here, but I'm not allowed to show his face. So we're heading out to Walker Canyon, which is near Lake Elsinore, where there's a massive super bloom that happens every few years in the California desert where it just explodes with flowers after all of the rain. So here we are on location, we're going to try out this gimbal right now, um, we've got some beautiful flowers in the super bloom and also we've got this nice Porsche here, uh, belongs to my friend George, who's kind to let us use this car and my buddy Danny here is going to be shooting some behind the scenes videos. So let's see what we can do with this gimbal. The, the transmount servos for both focus and zoom, being able to access all of this from the handle makes it very easy to get these kind of shots. And just using it in lock mode and I'm gonna be using the joystick when I do the front of the car I'm gonna go from the bottom and as we're going up the car I'm able to use the joystick to tilt the camera down so that it's keeping it nice in the frame the whole time so right now I'm gonna be doing some servo tests where we're gonna be zooming and also doing some focus on the car and I'm gonna keep my hands on here the whole time and uh, changing these settings So I now present a short sequence that I made using the Sony a7 III and the Zajun Crane 3 Lab. back to the studio let's have a look and see what the footage looks like um, I'll give you my conclusions on the gimbal and let you know what I think about the crane 3 lab okay here's my conclusions after using the crane 3 for a, just a little bit over a week um, first of all full disclosure this is not a sponsored video however this crane was given to me um, so let's talk about it some of the things I like about this so this joystick design is just really well designed. Number one, this is tilted down so I can see the screen very easily. Um, I like being able to grip this with two hands very firmly and it just enables me to just move in a more stable way than I could with the gimbals like this. Um, 
so it just gives much more support with two points of access here on your body. Um, the other thing I love is just how it easily it just goes into sling mode. So we can be up and we can go up high and then we can go down into sling and we can shoot low. And in sling mode, it's just so perfectly balanced. I can just move this along. Look at this. Right now, I'm doing that with one finger. Probably don't want to do that too long with one finger, <laughs> but I can. Um, and it's just very, very easy to do that. Another thing that's really great is the way this is designed to cut away here. You can access the camera and you can change the battery and you can change the card without having to upset your balance or take it off the gimbal. It really is huge to me is these latches that you can just lock these axes. Um, and what's so good about this is one, it makes it so easy to balance the camera because you're not trying to hold things up while you're balancing, you know, like one motor here, you're trying to balance that while not letting the other one flop around. You can just lock them into position. So I really like that. The other thing is it's nice for travel. When you're moving, you can use these latches and lock it down and fold it down. And you don't have to change all your positions or lose the balancing of your camera. Sure, you'll have to slide your camera backwards and forwards when you put it back on, but that's not a big deal. Another thing is I found it quite easy to change the camera settings, start and stop the camera, it worked really well. Didn't have any issues with that. So, you know, as far as that, it was good. As far as movement, um, I actually found it very smooth. Maybe because of this handle design, but also the motors are incredibly smooth and they're much more powerful than they were before. The motors are 50% quieter and um, I'll just put the specs up there on the new motors. So the other thing is the, the new motors are very powerful. Um, I could put a C200 on here, no problem. It's got a 10 pound payload. However, I like carrying it with this nice light Sony on there and it just works well. I found the motors to be very smooth, the panning to be very smooth and the joystick movement also able to get some nice smooth movements. And at the same time, everything is pretty well positioned uh, as far as zooming in and out and doing all these things. Focusing is easy. Um, one thing is a little bit tough to get to, but it's not a big deal. Just getting used to is going between the lock mode and the pan follow on the front there. It, it's not a big deal. You just got to change your grip a little bit to do it. Um, same thing with um, when we're using the focus wheel. But on the other side, I can still hold this with one hand, so I could very easily do that. So it's not really a big deal. I also love having the dual servos on here so I can do focus and I can do the zooming on board, which is really nice without having to touch the camera for that. And overall, because of the design, I found it very easy to work with. I didn't get tired. It's also very easy to carry because once again, this grip here is just so nicely balanced that I would just carry it for one hand like this, you know, just going to the location and then you just pull it out and then you're ready to go. So uh, I found it worked really well, very responsive, good smooth movements. Uh, you can see on the video for yourself there. Um, I didn't see too much bouncing up and down on the Z axis. Now the app, um, the one thing I found a little bit difficult is there's a little bit of a lag in the app, you know, because it's wireless. And so then when I'm panning, you can't stop when it's time because of that little tiny leg. You go to pan and then anticipate where you want the camera to go. So it's kind of difficult to line things up perfectly um, just moving the camera on the app. Um, as far as other things like doing the settings and things like that were pretty good. Although once again, a little bit laggy to see the results on the screen. But the app itself is capable of a lot. Um, able to do tracking, also able to do panorama, time-lapse, motion time-lapse slow motion time lapse. So some of these features there, I haven't tried those out yet and I'm actually really excited about that. And I'm gonna be trying out some of those more photography related features in there. So the other thing I like is the tracking. So I could put this on a tripod and point it towards myself, get the app out, make sure the framing and everything's nice and nudge the camera, you know, and just get everything zoomed, focused and everything right, you know, remotely. And then I could put the app down and walk around and the camera will track me. So it's basically a one man camera crew. I really love that about it. So overall, I've, I gotta tell you guys, this is a really incredible piece of equipment. I'm super excited about it. I really enjoyed using it and I'm actually looking forward to using it a lot more in the future. So the Crane 2 to the Crane 3 is not really an upgrade. It's, it's a monumental leap. It's a completely reinvented um, camera stabilizer. And so if you wanna get good smooth camera shots and it's easy to use, I absolutely recommend this. And so the cost of this uh, currently as we speak right now in the United States, it's $899 for the Crane 3 gimbal. It's $1199 for the Creative Package. 
The creator package comes with the two servos, comes with the phone holder here, it comes with the monopod, you know, the accessories that I showed. It's got a, a little clip there, um, quick release plates. So one of the things could be a little bit tricky to set up is the servos for the focus and the zoom if you've never done it before. It's actually really easy once you figure out how it works. And so what I've done is I've made another video. I was gonna include it on here, but it's, it's a 10 minute video and I didn't wanna make this video too long. So I'm gonna upload that as a separate video. And by the time you watch this, if it's not there, it'll be up in a day or two. And for the majority of you watching, it'll already be up. So I'm gonna link it in the comments underneath as soon as I post that video, so check that out. Now, let me ask you a question though. Do you guys have a camera stabilizer right now? What are you using for camera stabilizer? Is it a tripod or do you have a, a ronin S? Do you have an earlier crane? Do you have this one, a Weeble? Let me know in the comments underneath. And also, if you love these kind of reviews on the creative equipment, hit the subscribe button right now, become part of the Cafe Crew, and you'll get a new video from me every single week. If you like this video, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.